Hello, English department. Welcome back. I want to talk about mud larking. Mud larking. So I've got a video playing on mute there on your screen and as well as an Instagram that you might want to check out later. Um, we're going to do a very lo-fi presentation, not a lot of PowerPoints or prezies or fancy things. I like to keep it lo-fi sometimes, even when I'm working in a digital space. I just like that DIY feel, a little punk rock, a little bit chat booky, um, you know, a little self-publishing, just a little bit of how I'm going to roll on this one. So we've got kind of a very functional um, video happening in front of you. Um, and it displays mud larking. This video on YouTube obviously is uploaded August 25th, 2022. So at the time of recording, this is a very recent video because I'm also in August of 2022. I don't know how recent it is, depending on when you decide to watch this. But at the moment, it's very new. I was also from one of my favorite mud larking channels on YouTube. I don't know what kind of channels you partake in on YouTube. Um, but during the pandemic, my YouTube usage skyrocketed. Um, and I found myself going for a lot of calming content, a lot of um, content that made me feel like I was alongside of someone, a lot more lifestyle vlogs, a lot more community kind of hangout vlogs. Uh, my YouTube habits changed drastically. And one of the concepts that I found is a British concept, mudlarking. Um, so mudlarking. I guess we should at this point leave the video for a moment and jump into an actual definition. So let's just do that. So mudlark is someone who scavenges in river mud for items of value. Used especially to describe those who scavenged this way in London during the 18th and 19th centuries. And here's a Nice, tragic, historic depiction of the mudlarks. The mudlarks in the earliest incarnation, like this definition uh, points out, are those that are scavenging. They are going primarily along the coastal shore, looking for pieces that are um, washing up from you know, wreckage from boats, shipping containers that have opened up, boats that went down on the channel or at sea, and they're trying to scavenge that to resell it. They're also working the Thames, the Thames, the Thames, I'm not British. I'm a redneck from Iron Station, North Carolina. It sounds something like one of those. I'm doing along the, the main um, London thoroughfares, waterways, and low tide, high tide are kind of scavenging the edges, looking for dropped tools um, and dropped pieces. Um, a lot of what they collect are broken bits, broken bits of glassware, broken bits of pottery, discarded mugs. Um, they also find a lot of dented and worked warped tin plates, um, and a lot of broken items. Most items don't have very much value, so they're going to wind up collecting big sacks of these things and then turn them over to a guild to have them melted down, to have the glass, the pottery repurposed, um, and to have the metal reworked. And they're going to have you know a living that way. This is a great hobby for widows, or a great employment there in the early 18th century. This is a great job for widows and orphans, uh, people that can't find any other kind of work in other places. So people too young to go to the factories can mudlark. It could be that your mother, your father, all of your older siblings are providing in a factory somewhere, and you're mudlarking, trying to help the family afford the flat and the provisions there in London. Um, mudlarking, of course, comes from these kind of magpie birds. It's a, an you know, avian reference. Um, the mudlark then is this person's a scavenger, the way a lot of birds are scavengers, okay? So your mudlark is absolutely born of that generation, the um, mid 18th century into the 19th century. If we turn back to YouTube for a moment, what we're going to find is a different looking mudlark. Um, these mudlarks are no longer in the 18th and 19th century. Um, now these are hobbyist mudlarks. Um, nearly all of these people are scavenging just for fun. It's, you know, that's where the YouTube channel comes in. They're kind of taking people along as they find um, bottles that, if they are broken, can be repurposed. Or if they aren't broken, they can be you know, arts and crafted in some way. Um, some of the mudlarks and the hobby mudlark or just doing it for something fun. 
Um, this is the equivalent of walking through a rural North Carolina farm, kicking your feet, trying to find arrowheads. Um, mudlarking is possible in England, more so than America, because of its age. You know, the, the history going back to the Roman conquest of an invasion of the Picts, the Jutes, the Angles, and the Saxons, that history being so old leaves a lot of trash behind. Um, a phrase they often use, I believe they've used in this video, is a bottle dump, which is a place that, you know, bottles and other kinds of refuge are being thrown out when they no longer have a purpose. One of the aspects of mudlarking, even the, hub, the, the hobbyists keep pointing out, if you watch just hours and hours of mudlarks, is that they realize how much was thrown away in previous generations. We like to think back to the past. In many cultures, we think about the past being more thrifty and less wasteful. But then you start seeing the sheer numbers of you know, beads, buttons, um, discarded mugs that are whole, bottles that could have been refilled and reused. And you realize that even going back in the Victorian and the industrialized um, era of British history, a lot of things had still had value and use were being thrown away. That begins to paint a different picture of the 18th and 19th century from the industrialization, the Victorian era. It paints a whole different picture rather than that kind of romanticized, thrifty person that we like to talk about, to realize that a large part of that society is impoverished, the rest of that society was not impoverished and saw excess and saw waste and managed it. Maybe the same way we still manage excess and waste. If you live on an island, you have to worry about that a lot more than if you live on a giant continent. Um, if you live on an island old enough, then your trash is much more interesting. Obviously, as you dig back through Europe, um, some sort of mudlarking going through Europe down um, the peninsula back toward Africa. You're going to find older and older items. And so the mudlarking channels are fun for me. They're fun, just kind of a nice, chill watch. A lot of these channels also have crafting channels. Um, I particularly like it when they find and repurpose items. That's why I have their Instagram up. You have the same mudlarkers that are watching in the video, the same hobby mudlarkers on modern day. Here's their Instagram, and you can see the types of pieces they're, they're pulling and then what they're going to wind up doing with it. Besides some absolutely gorgeous looks at um, Southern England on that channel, um, Wales on another channel, Scotland and other mudlocking channels, you'll also see some interesting things like China dolls, porcelain dolls, arms and bits and pieces that can be repurposed, reclaimed, bottle stoppers, marbles, beads, um, creating things out of those beads and kind of the fringe you meet along the way being the truth story anyway, right? And so I was fascinated with mudlarking um, during my time in the pandemic. I wanted to share that with you. It's kind of an interesting cultural component. Um, if you're interested in mudlarking as a hobby, I would suggest that that could happen in America, but you'll have a lot harder time finding those kind of resources. In America, the hobby would look like going through the remains of the foundations of older homes. They'll take you back, you know, 100 years, 150 years. You could also go back a little bit further and try to find arrowheads and fields. If you can still find a, an old farm that's still tilling it up, they do still times, sometimes find arrowheads and pottery pieces from pre-colonization. Um, but the British do have the advantage over us in mudlarking. Thank you, YouTube, for giving us a commercial in the middle of my presentation. They do have the advantage in the age of their, their dumps. They have better trash than we do. Um, more interesting, beautiful trash than we do. This could also be discussed not just as a fun pastime and hobby of what they do or what we do as we watch them in a kind of parasocial social media way, if you, if you like, in your classes. Um, you could also talk about this um, in recycling units. I'm going to talk about this on show a video like this on Earth Day and look at recycling as a hobby and not just as the thing that will save the planet and try to reframe that conversation a little bit. Um, that could grow out of these mudlocking videos. I did want to highlight today as a piece of current British culture and 18th and 19th century British culture, um, seeing how it's evolved over the years. As we think about teaching Brit Lit 1 and 2, 
Um, obviously, mudlarking is going to fit into the Brit Lit too, because here at Gaston College, we're basically breaking British literature at Shakespeare. So Brit Lit 1, in quick terms, is the Romans and the pre-Romans all the way through Shakespeare. And then Brit Lit 2 is Shakespeare. And then as far in the future as you um, can get them, most people, I think, are going from Shakespeare to the, the Great Wars. But you absolutely could teach more modern British literature. Um, Anthony Burgess and those kind of pieces in that class and still fit in the scope of that class because it's fairly undefined. As we're talking about literature, culture, history, are always going to bubble up. Um, we can take something from the 18th and 19th centuries like mudlarking, which to a student in a college in North Carolina is going to seem kind of quaint and kind of odd at times, perhaps, um, and kind of recontextualize that in the modern day as well as 18th, 19th century. We have once a way to feed orphans and widows. Now we're looking at a way to just have a hobby, spend some time with your family and friends and enjoy um, picking up some things. Uh, if you really want to dig into mudlarking, you can dig into the legal aspects of it, the literature of it, you know, the permits that you need to pick in certain areas and why you can't just walk over people's property and take their trash away from them. Um, but that's a discussion that may or may not be in the scope of your literature class unless you're getting into legal discussions and how laws have evolved, how ownership rights in you know, Europe have evolved over generations through a literature class then you may want to dig into those aspects. I think there's a historical and cultural component to mudlarking um, that speaks to various time periods. And I wanted to kind of introduce that to you in case, like me, you never knew about that pre-pandemic. I like we can find new ideas and new aspects of a culture and work those in to the class where it fits appropriately. That's great for our global education and our global competencies as we're thinking about globalizing courses and making sure that the Gaston College student is a community college student, but that community college is a global community. And then we need aspects like mudlarking along the way to kind of add that humanization aspect sometimes. So I wanted to take time to give you a little culture, give you a little history, give you a little bit of a visual. Um, there are lots of great mudlarking channels on YouTube. Should you want to explore those further, use those in texts the, as texts themselves in your class. YouTube is fairly easy to cite in MLA, so it makes pretty good essay material, um, which is fortunate. Some social medias and MLA or APA can be quite the pain. I, I personally hate trying to cite Twitter. It's just annoying. Um, but And Facebook's dang near impossible. But YouTube is very academic friendly in a lot of respects. So if you wanted to make this the text of your course and have a unit on British um, social media, then mudlarking could be one of those pieces. Not the only piece by any means, just one of the voices that I wanted to kind of look at today. So ladies and gentlemen, that is your modern mudlarking and a look back. Thank you for joining us at this Gaston College Lightning presentation. As always, I look forward to hearing what my colleagues have to do in their presentations, in the meetings, or perhaps in the uh, teams and other digital spaces if they don't feel like they can fit their passions into 15 minutes. But thank you for joining us, and I have enjoyed telling you about it. Have a good day.